about Diodron's philosophical writings. Diodron uh, began to write about questions which we may consider philosophical quite early, probably before the age of 30. And he produced altogether 13 texts of obvious philosophical relevance. Of these, 12 are still extant. When we look at these texts, we can see that he went through a long process of radicalization in terms of his views of neo-Confucianism. And this radicalization process culminated towards the end of his life. By far, his most important works, philosophical works, are the Yuan Shan, and the month, I'm oh, sorry, and the month, the Siya Shudrang. Uh, Yuan Shan means the, on the origin of goodness, and the month, the Siya Shudrang means event, evidential com commentary on the meaning of the words of Mencius. These are by far his most important philosophical texts, and especially the, uh, his evidential commentary on the meaning of the words of Mencius which was published only posthumously, stands out as his major work. And it should be ranked, I believe, as one of the most interesting philosophical texts in Chinese history. Daidon's critique of Li Xue proceeded along two different lines. On the one hand, he argued that Li Xue was oppressive, with disastrous effects for many people. In a letter that he wrote just a few months before his death, he went so far as to say that Li principle was used to kill people. Yi Li Sharan. Li was used to kill people. And in his evidential commentary, he wrote that the proponents of Li Xie were indifferent to human suffering. And I quote, even when they, the proponents of Li Xie, see people crying out because they are starving or feeling cold, or see sorrow and hatred between men and women, or when they see people who, facing death, cling on to their lives, they consider this nothing but expressions of human desires. So this was one um, line of his criticism of Li Xie, that it was oppressive. On the other hand, he also argued that Li Xie misrepresented the ideas of the Confucian classics and that it was this deviation from true Confucianism that explained why it had come to play such an oppressive role in Chinese society. There was no doubt in Daidra's mind that there were some basic mistaken philosophical ideas of Zhu Xi that resulted in Li Xie's oppressive role. Put in more abstract terms, we can say that he shared the conviction of André Glucksmann, Bernard Henri Lévy, and others in seeking the explanation for political oppression and social injustice in some basic philosophical or theoretical orientation. What was it then, in Daidron's view, that was so wrong with Li Xie, that it led to indifference to human suffering, and even to people getting murdered in the name of Li? The short answer to this question is that Daidron believed that Li Xie defined Li principle as a subjective entity, so that anyone with authority could claim that his subjective opinions, in uh, Dai Zhen's vocabulary, this was Yi Jian. Uh, I think we should understand his Yi Jian as subjective opinions, were Li. In Dai Zhen's views, words, the proponents of Li Xie considered Li, and I quote again, as if it were a thing obtained from heaven and residing uh, in the heart. Ru yo wu yan, de yu tian, er ju yu xin. Ru yo wu yan, eh, sorry. Ru yo wu yan, de yu tian, er ju yu xin. As if it were a thing obtained from heaven and residing in the heart. And I, he said, I fear. Uh, those, I fear those who seek principle that is Li and righteousness and take these to be represented by their subjective opinions. Who knows the end of the calamities that this will cause the people? 
in order to give a fuller and more nuanced answer to the question, what it was in Dijon's view that was so wrong with Yishe, that it led to indifference to human suffering, and even to people getting murdered in the name of Lee. I would now first like to remind you of some of the main features of Drusi's Yishe, and then try to describe the respects in which Dijon disagreed. <clears throat> 